It's Valentine's Day, and if you're sitting by the phone, desperately waiting for that someone to call, wait no more. We are going to explore ABBA's first number one hit, where they put all that misery and pain to music. Ring Ring is a precursor for many things that make ABBA. First, the music and recording itself, the sound, production, catchiness. And secondly, the importance of those very few, but really crucial people in ABBA's team. Ring Ring brings it all together, and it was released exactly 50 years ago today, on Valentine's Day, 1973. Okay, so Ring Ring was written in Björn and Benny's cottage on the island of Vixö. Amazingly, it was written just one week before the deadline of submitting songs for Sweden's pre-selection of the Eurovision Song Contest. Last time, we explored how they failed with this song in their pre-selection. You could wonder how they still wanted to stay together as a group, and one of the big reasons was in fact this song, Ring Ring, because of its reputation with an audience. The immense success in Sweden, the high chart position in many European countries and even far away in South Africa, South America and later on in Australia and New Zealand as well. The audience was hooked because they witnessed ABBA in their early beginning but with many of ABBA's most important classic trademarks. So within just one or two days over one weekend, Björn and Benny were able to come up with an entire pop song that was catchy. One of the most important features of that catchiness was the actual title. And this is where another important part of ABBA enters the equation, their manager Stig Andersson. On that weekend of writing the song, he came up with the title Ring Ring. It was short and memorable and recognizable in many countries. Another most important part of ABBA's team came three days later, when they found themselves at Metronome Studios to record the song. It was ABBA's engineer Michael B. Tretto, who elevated Ring Ring into the magnificent soundscape that became so unique for ABBA. Like Björn and Benny, and many other artists as well, Tretto was always fascinated by the sound and secret technique of American record producer Phil Spector. By pure chance, he was just reading a book about Phil Spector at the time when Ring Ring was born, and he realized the secret of Spector's wall of sound. An actual wall of sounds by layering one and the same instrument over and over again, overdubbing several players. But Tretto didn't just copy Spectre, he was taking it as an inspiration really and expanded his very own ideas and experiments. First of all, they didn't have the budget for so many musicians. Besides Benny on keyboards and Mellotron and Björn on guitar, Ring Ring has only one person on drums, one on bass and another one on guitar. These three musicians also happen to be some of the most crucial key players in ABBA's entire future output. And they simply had to play their individual part several times. For Tretto, it didn't stop here to put his own stamp on Spectre's technique. One night, he was experimenting at the studio and he came up with a secret. He was also able to overdub the exact same part of an instrument and altering the speed. Combined with the other overdubs, it created the full sound of Ring Ring. So when it comes to the core music and track, that was certainly one of the reasons for this song to be so effective with an audience. A catchy title, that very special sound, and a third ingredient, that irresistible and catchy guitar and bass riff. Now, here's the thing about that. There is one song written by Giorgio Moroder from 1971 called Underdog. The riff of that song is very similar to Ring Ring. I will play a short snippet and I will also combine the vocals of Agneta and Frida to this song. Let's see how it fits. This is Underdog. Even the key change. Well, Björn and Benny said that they have no recollection of ever hearing this song and according to news reports from the time, it took half a day in the recording studio to come up with a riff for Ring Ring. So perhaps one of the musicians had Underdog subconsciously in his mind. The song was also featured in a film from 1972, more precisely a German-French soft porn. Who knows what Björn, Benny and company were watching at the time. But listening to the entirety of Underdog 
and to the entirety of Ring Ring, both songs are completely different in tone, structure and message. And if anything, the riff of Underdog, apparently unintentionally, found a place in a completely new environment. The team around Ring Ring was expanded even further. The English lyrics were written by Neil Sedaka and Phil Cody. As far as I know, that makes it the only ABBA song to feature other songwriters besides Björn, Manny and Stig, apart from Disillusion and the charity medley of folk songs. Neil Sedaka was an inspiration for Björn and Benny with the same type of happy songs. But Karl Magnus Palm points out a very interesting perspective. Why would they need someone else in the first place if Björn was perfectly able to write lyrics in any way for a song that wouldn't need sophisticated words? And the truth is, since Ring Ring was written for Melody Festival and hopefully Eurovision, they simply wanted to have someone in the credits who was internationally famous. The lyrics may be simple and straightforward, yet they deal with the heartache of one-way love. Who could possibly convey that longing and pain in the best way possible? And so, finally, Ring Ring gave the world the ultimate trademark of ABBA. In Benny's words, 90% of what makes the ABBA sound. The combined vocals of Agneta and Frida. Here's a snippet, the part just prior to the chorus, where they suggest that the best thing would be for that lover to call. Listen to the sharpness of their voices. Oh, maybe not in bed again. Oh, ring, ring. Why don't you give me a call? They convey a painful cry into the most beautiful singing. I would give them a call. This was only the second song to feature a sole lead vocal by Agneta and Frida in combination, after they recorded Nina Pretty Ballerina two months before, in November 1972. There is one part midway through the chorus where Björn and Benny sing the lines and I sit all alone impatiently, won't you please understand the need in me. That is like a leftover of the trading of lines between male and female in Abba's two previous singles, People Need Love and He Is Your Brother, but really scaled down. And in a way, it could be a suggestion that amidst the sorrow of the woman, there is also the man who is impatiently waiting for her to call. Male and female may have the same sorrow after all. If you listen to the isolated vocals at that point, try to ignore Björn and Benny and listen very carefully. Above the male vocals, you can hear the shimmer of Agneta and Frida singing very high. And I sit all alone impatiently, won't you please understand the need in me? And that's the magic of ABBA, the ladies' combination, the way Michael Petretto handled them by layering their vocals, re-recording, overdubbing and altering the speed for backing moments. The simple tale of this song has no solution. In the end, the woman repeats the phrase, why don't you give me a call, over and over again, until the song fades out. That feeling of restlessness of the woman is, in my opinion, kind of reflected in some of the instruments throughout the song. Abba's band has that incredible balance between straightforward delivery and some very creative moments of playfulness. At the end of the first chorus, leading to the next verse, we have some twangy guitar playing. You can also hear playful or nervous guitars during that part when Björn and Benny are on lead vocals. But the backing track gets to its craziest moments during the end of the song. The most obvious one is Benny, who is doing plissandos on his piano over and over again with a repetition of those final lines. In the Swedish mix, in the final chorus, you can also hear a short burst of an instrument that almost sounds like a saxophone, which I think is Benny on Mellotron. At the very end of the original instrumental mix, which slumbers in the archives, the chorus is repeated over and over again until all musicians stop playing, and Janne Schaffer improvises on his electric guitar doing some weird noises. And that's the crazy ending to Ring Ring. The song had the full ABBA magic and power in many ways. Catchiness, tight production, energetic vocals and also major contributions by key members, the integrity of ABBA's session players, Michael Bitretto's magic, and Stig Anderson's conviction to push and push for success. Not only did he give the song its catchy title, he was responsible for spreading Ring Ring out of Sweden across Europe by making many deals and within a few months had it released in many countries. At the time, it became the biggest global hit ever by any Swedish artist. With all of those signature ABBA ingredients, I don't think there could have been a better song 
to actually use the new name of the group for the very first time. Instead of Björn, Benny, Agnetta and Efried, ABBA was introduced in the autumn of 1973 and in October that year the British and Italian singles of Ring Ring were the first to feature that name. In the summer of 73, ABBA recorded a German and Spanish version for Ring Ring. The Spanish version was unreleased until 1994. However, in September 1973, a press release from Polar Music announced that the song in Spanish would soon be released in Latin America, primarily Argentina, Brazil and Peru. In an interview from January 1974, Agneta mentions how difficult it was to record it in Spanish and said that the Spanish people still seem to understand them because the record is doing really well. There seems to be no other evidence that the Spanish version was released at the time. This is interesting because two years later, Agneta also said that they recorded Waterloo in Spanish, and none of the ABBA ABBA members objected in that interview. A Spanish version of Waterloo has never surfaced, but Ring Ring also never surfaced until 20 years later. So who knows? In 1974, they prepared two remixes of Ring Ring for the UK and United States. The song was slowed down and received additional overdubs of a beefed-up electric guitar by Janis Schaffer and saxophone by the late Ulf Anderson. Apart from an extended remix of Voulez Vous five years later, this was the only time ever that an ABBA song was remixed and released. And it was mainly done to have a follow-up in the UK which was similar to Waterloo. The saxophone overdub is one of the most obvious connections. ABBA performed the song live in concert between 1973 and 1975 and even live on TV at the Tommy Cooper Hour in 1974. The final performance of Ring Ring was in 1976 in Australia, where the song had entered the charts in that year. Today, we are celebrating ABBA's timeless and unforgettable original recording of Ring Ring, the song that really started their European success and made them stick together as a group. 50 years of Ring Ring. Okay, I will give her that call now. Hello, this is Agneta of ABBA. Hello, Agneta. This is Bobby's brother. Oh well, I guess I'm 50 years too late. 